Hi viewers, um, I had a little problem, so we're going to go try and solve it. Uh, I had to get this critter ridder. So what I found was, is, uh, two of my apple trees had been pushed out of the ground. And uh, when I looked at them, they were gnawed all the way around the trunk. So, uh, I know what it is, it's voles that are doing this, because apparently that's what they do. Um, I did try to stick them back in the ground and it was a little more thawed then, but then it's frozen now. So it's going to be harder for me to place this. Um, I wanted to see some, to something more natural, but next year I'm going to be growing mint, which is a more natural way to try and uh, um, deter bulls, skunks, raccoons, stuff like that. They don't like mint and peppermint, so if you shred it all up and then you add it to the dirt a little bit, it'll... Uh, It'll, they don't like it. it. It repels them. Now this stuff here doesn't kill animals. It doesn't. Uh, it just. It's uh, It's unpleasant for them, as as they say on the label. It just makes it unpleasant. So we're gonna make sure we put a. Well, I got gloves on. Um, you don't want to be using. Uh, you need waterproof gloves if you're gonna be doing it near the water. Now this has a sprinkle on it. I'm just gonna be sprinkling it. So what we're looking for today is just a couple of holes. So wherever they started to burrow, I'm just gonna toss a couple of pellets down in there. Uh, maybe sprinkle a little bit on top and hope the water kind of pushes it down. But then in the spring, I'm going to go back and maybe reapply. And, and then next year, we'll go all natural with just the mint and or peppermint, uh, spearmint, stuff like that. Anything that will deter them. So we got to do this because I've lost two trees now and I'm hoping they'll come back because they still got a callus on the bottom. Uh, I don't know if they've killed the taproot completely, so I won't know that till spring. But if they do, that sucks because that means I spent money on trees that didn't work. So uh, I'm all about organic stuff, but in some cases, I just got to take care of this. And we're not growing fruit yet, so the idea is to get this ready uh, so that um, they they only seem to want to eat the younger saplings. So once they get a good start and a good uh, once they're in the ground and they're established a little bit for a year or two, then yeah, I won't have to worry about it anymore. And depending on the location as well so let's get out there uh, we'll find a, a little vole hole and we'll put some of this in there and then uh, and then we'll talk about doing some uh, chestnut stratification so. well this is where I lost some footage because of the extreme weather uh, but I went down and sprinkled some of that critter ritter around a lot of the fruit trees let's get on with the uh, chestnut stratification So does anyone else have a kit like this? These are all my seeds that I see. I got my catalpa. I got some rose hips there. I got my eggshells, cinnamon, a bunch of seeds, everything ready to go. My dirt right here. My hydrator. This is my little workstation. And we're going to do the chestnuts here. So let's get started on that. Okay, so I have my uh, chestnuts here. I got these from the local Walmart. Um, these are from Italy, according to the uh, the label. They come from Italy, but they were packaged in Milton, Ontario. Um, so I would assume these are a type of European uh, chestnut. They they do feel a little loose skinned, which probably makes them easier for peeling. But we're going to use these type. And I have this container right here. There's probably about 30, so I'm going to have two small layers in here. Um, and we're just going to get into some dirt. Okay. So I just have some of this mycorrhizal dirt here. It's got some uh, peat in it and uh, topsoil perlite. Um, and I got my, my spray bottle right here. Do it a little squirt. You don't want it wet. You just want it to be damp. If it's too wet, it'll just create a lot of mold. That absorb a little bit. Come up. So it's pretty simple with chestnuts. I mean, there's, and like I said, with the bulbs situation, there's a little point. That's how you know it's edible. 
actually, because it's got a point on it. Now the funny thing about chestnuts too, which is kind of cool, is when you grow them, they'll break out roots from here, but they also break out the actual tree will come out the same end. So that's kind of neat that they do that. So you just place it in there and, and we're just going to stratify these. So we're looking for them to get some roots on them and then later put them in a bigger pot, right? In the spring. So you can put these fairly close. Probably going to do about 15 in a layer. Hopefully they'll fit. These are definitely different types of chestnuts that I've seen. These are definitely different. I'm uh, more used to the more flat style and they're a little more red. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't, um, they're not split. So I'm pretty sure they don't roast them before you get them because technically you're supposed to roast them before you eat them. That's when they taste the best. So I wouldn't even know. I've never even had a chestnut before unless it was in like say, uh, some, uh, Asian food that I was eating or, or, uh, some like in a mix of some kind of stir fry that someone may have made. I probably wouldn't even have known it was there. I'll just go to town and spread these out a little bit more. So you can see, I got about one more in here. And then I'm going to put another layer. And I didn't check the viability of these. I'm just going to grow them and find out because it's too late now. I mean, I got them, so they got to go in. So we'll get some more of this mycorrhizal dirt in here. I'll just, just cover that. dry dirt safety first I wanted to yeah just uh, pretty much do this in my kitchen because get it started here and I got three months so it's a lot of waiting I'm a little worried because I don't have any uh, south facing windows here right so um, basically this is all we're gonna do same thing It's a little dry, a little split there, so I don't think I'm going to use that one. I think that one's not good. It doesn't say roasted on them, so like I said, I think they're pretty much uh, they're just dried out. But I have an idea. Oh, yeah, she's in there. Oh yeah, she's. Uh, I think this one's a little rotten. It's got some. Uh, some mold in there, so I'll do that. Now, before I started, I, I should have mentioned that you should wash your, your container that you're gonna do it in, even if it is um, a, a planter pot, a five gallon, two gallon, whatever, it doesn't matter what size it is, but you should clean it with a light soap and water and uh, definitely clean it from bacteria and fungus. That's what you wanna avoid when you're doing stuff like this. The mycorrhizal has the right kind of fungus. So the thing is with chestnuts is they get a blight and it came back in Canada in 1907 through the, I believe it was the Bronx Zoo. Um, they were trying to bring in these species or whatever and it, and it, it contracted some of the chestnuts and then it, it in, and at a rate of 25 miles a year, by the time 1950s came around, there was barely any chestnuts left, edible chestnuts. Um, but the thing is, they, they only die down to the root. So then the root still lives. So what they do is they still shoot up shoots of these original chestnuts. They just don't make it very long. They go five, six years, whatever, and then they die. And then they die, but the roots still survive. So then more sprouts come out of that. It's just like water sprouts on anything. And you'd know that if you're doing any kind of fruit trees and stuff like that. So we'll get some more dirt on top of here. slightly cover it and then we're gonna make sure she's damp enough and 
again. This is my first year doing stuff, so I haven't really found my my niche or um, what I'm best at doing. Just try to take the best of what I see and try to copy it for now. And uh, I'd like to. I've seen a guy do this in a bucket of sand, and he just buried it outside in the ground. And he comes back a year later, he's got like 90% effective growth. So. Yeah. So we're just gonna keep giving this a bunch of uh, water. Just seal that like so. There we go. And we'll put that in the fridge for uh, two or three months. And right now we should label it. It's uh, January what's the 24th. That on there and we're done so we'll just stick that in the fridge we'll check on it in in a month or so and definitely in the spring I'll be making another uh, video on how we did hopefully if I did really good I'll tell you and if I did really bad I'll definitely bring that up in a different video but probably mixed in with another something else I was doing as a, just a quick update um, but if it does so well then uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with them next because once they root I gotta put them in the other pots and we'll have to get that going so yeah, I'm definitely gonna do a bunch of stratification here, but we're gonna start with the chestnuts. We'll get some cherries in there, some apricots, some plum. Uh, stay tuned, keep watching. And uh, if you can, uh, hit that thumbs up down there for me and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week.